Let's reduce it down to the most basic building blocks of any society, households and companies. Households come in all shapes and sizes, single people, big families, and everything in between. They might live in the countryside, in the suburbs, or the city. Wherever they are, however they look, they're all part of what we refer to as the economy. One of the economic roles that households fulfill is supplying labor to companies. Anyone with a job is providing their physical or mental skills to a company. Whether on a farm, in a factory, in an office, a shop, or restaurant, it's all labor. Of course, in return for this labor, companies pay their employees. This money comes back to the household as wages. Then, workers use their hard-earned cash to buy things they need. And who do they buy those things from? Other companies. The cycle we just saw, work in return for wages, also happens in reverse. In this process, workers in households give companies their money. They use their wages to buy goods like food, clothing, electricity, or water. This cycle is known as the circular flow of income. It happens in every city and every country, everywhere, every day. It is the foundation of global economies. Needless to say, a real economy is a bit more complicated. There are a few bits missing if you want a fuller picture of how it all works. First, we need to add in government. Governments collect taxes from households and companies. This is usually a percentage of income or a fee for a service they provide. The government then uses this money to buy things we all need, known as public services. Things like roads, schools, the police, or the military. This means that, like households, governments also need to make purchases from companies. For example, buying construction materials for a new school or light bulbs for street lamps. They can also give this money to households experiencing difficulty in the form of welfare payments, which are then used to make more purchases from companies. And on it goes. Because governments collect money from almost every household and almost every company, they are the most important component in every country's economy. This final piece of the puzzle is the financial system. This is the part of the economy that this course is focused on. If households are able to earn more than they spend, they end up with a bit of money left over at the end of the month. These are called savings. They can either keep those savings at home, save them in a bank, or lend them to someone who needs funding, not as a gift, but as an investment. Who is it that needs those investments? Companies very often need cash to expand and evolve. They might want to do things like build a new factory or buy new machinery. As companies grow, their profits will usually grow as well. They'll then use these increased profits to return money to their investors, not just the initial money that they put in, but also with a premium, so that the investors receive more money than they initially invested. That said, there's inherent risk involved with investing. Things might not always go to plan. A company might encounter problems and not make a decent profit, or it might fail entirely. And when working with different individuals, there is also the potential for fraud. That's where the financial system comes in. The financial system invests savings in a variety of ways. When households deposit money into a bank, these institutions use the funds to make loans to individuals and businesses and earn interest. Alternatively, institutions such as hedge funds or pension funds, for example, pull resources from multiple individuals to invest in diversified portfolios of assets, such as stocks, bonds, and real estate. So, overall, the system helps bridge the gap between household savers and companies in need of investment.